Hello and welcome to this tutorial on what to do if a good plugin or theme goes bad on you. Now I'm using as a demonstration our MSET Ramapo site today and I want to point out a couple things before I get started. First, I am looking over here in the uh, administration area and I've got a couple of different plugins running here. I've got TablePress, WordPress Backup to Dropbox, uh, WordPress Backup Plugin, WordPress uh, Google Fonts, etc. I will uh, do another screencast here on plugins that I find useful, but of course a lot of this is um, trial and error looking at the um, comments of other users when you're downloading uh, plugins, making sure you pay attention to what the plugin is compatible to, is it compatible to your version of WordPress, etc. What I want to talk to you today about is this notion that once you download a plugin, if you activate it, let me show you that, over here you can see that Jetpack for WordPress is not active in here and the indication is that the activate um, option is available to me. Here TablePress is running and is active. I can see that because I've got the deactivate option available to me. Um, to get rid of a simple plugin that you don't want, all you need to do is come to this particular page, Plugins, and if you wanted to come over to uh, delete it, you would just simply click on Delete. It would ask you if you wanted to delete. Know that when you delete it, you delete any associated data with it. So don't delete it if you're not sure. If you think you might not need to come back to it, simply deactivate it. That would be your better choice. But deleting it's a great thing to do. If you know you're never going to use it again, it just didn't work. Um, the other option, of course, is that, um, or excuse me, the other situation, of course, is that sometimes when you download a plugin, it inadvertently, you didn't see that it didn't work with your site or it just out and out doesn't work with your site for whatever reason. And worst case scenario, it will crash your entire site. It will make your site's pages go away. It will look as if there's nothing there. You can't log in to fix it or uninstall it. That's a pretty disastrous situation, but you need to be prepared for it because if you're playing around with plugins, it could potentially happen to you. So how do you get rid of a plugin if in fact you've crashed your entire site? I'm going to, for the sake of example, um, show you how to get rid of this WordPress backup to Dropbox. Now, unfortunately, while I do want to do a WordPress backup to Dropbox, this particular one didn't work for me. Now, it could work for you, I don't know, but it didn't work with my settings. So I know that, don't want it. Um, if I have an option to deactivate it, I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, so best practice is to deactivate it and then delete it. But again, I'm, I'm going into the scenario that says you've crashed your entire site, can't get it to load, can't get to the uh, administrative level of it. So pretending that nothing is appearing and you're in a total panic, the next thing you need to do is log in to the Bluehost cPanel. And I have a link of it right here off of our main MSCT site. And once I click into that, I would go ahead and click into cPanel here. Now I've already logged in, but basically I would get into home over here. And then I would come over here to cPanel. Oops, let's get rid of cPanel. And now I'm back at this particular page. Now, most of the time you would, um, do an FTP into your site and get rid of anything that's wrong with it. FTP, standing for File Transfer Protocol, is used when you're doing websites in the traditional way, which you can certainly do with Bluehost. So if that's the case, then you would have set up an FTP account and you would have been well on your way. Um, we're going to use Bluehost's built-in file manager, which is in essence a way to FTP into the site but you're not using a client software to do that. You're not using special software to do that. And um, um, it is a web interface, so it's a little bit slower than if you were doing a traditional FTP. In any case, I've opened up the site here, and over here on the left-hand side, I've got my space where all of my content sits under the public underscore HTML folder. 
And in this particular case, I'm looking at the primary website that I have going, which is this, the primary um, master site. Now, the thing you need to know here is that every time you install a new instance of WordPress or a new instance of um, Moodle or any other software, um, you're going to be tucking it into these individual folders here. Oops. So this is a folder. Inside that particular folder is another WordPress. So if I were to go into this, I would see that there's a WordPress admin content and includes folder. And then all of these other pieces are the things that standardly drive WordPress, right? So let me just show you one more over here. Same thing. Each WordPress folder is going to have an admin content and includes, and then a whole bunch of really standard files that you don't want to uh, mess with. Well, back here at the root or at the top, this is one giant WordPress, and that's what drives this guy over here. So now I just need to recognize that these three folders here are the ones that are part of the WordPress for the master site. They are not the pieces for the little subfolders uh, WordPress sites, but they are for the master site overall. Now, if in fact I ever, um, again, uh, get a plugin in there that has crashed the system, this is your only way to recover. So what you can do is you can go ahead and take a look inside these. Um, if I go into the admin folder and if I go into includes, here's a whole bunch of files that you don't want to touch, but but always good to know that they exist just in case. Here what I want to do is I want to go to, um, pardon me, let me start over again. I'm going to go to the top here. I'm going to go to WP content and the, in the content folder, that's where it loads our um, upgrades or our uploads or our plugins or our themes. So the uploads, for example, would show you um, all of the individual little um, images that you may have uploaded through time, right? Um, that's where all of that's stored. Um, we're going after um, plugins, but before I get to that, let me take you into themes. All of your themes are loaded here as well. So if in fact, let me jump over here to a theme. Notice that you've got different themes here. And if you've been playing around with themes, you may have a ton of themes in here that you realize, gosh, I don't need. But notice here, there's really no way to delete a theme right from in WordPress. The only way to really delete a theme is to come over here to your cPanel, find the folder, click on it, and hit delete. And that would, in turn, get rid of the extra themes, pardon me, here in your WordPress install. So back to the idea of plugins. I'm going to come in to plugins here and here what you're seeing is a list of all of the different plugins that are available um, in my current WordPress, right? So if I come back over here and go to plugins, each of these plugins has a separate little folder and of course the one you want to delete is important to know. In this particular case, I want to delete the one called WordPress Backup to Dropbox. Again, when I installed it, for me, it didn't work. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find that particular folder. I'm going to click on Delete. I'm going to click on Delete Files. And of course, it's asking you, are you sure you want to do this? Because once you do, you delete any uh, associated content uh, going with it. If I um, if I am in a state where it's crashed, what I would then recommend you do is go ahead and close your browser and then go ahead and, or close that particular browser. You don't necessarily need to cl close cPanel, um, but then bring up another browser tab and re-navigate to your website. If in fact it was the plugin that was deleting or causing corruption in your website by having deleted the plugin at the back side of it in the cPanel, it would take care of it. And um, likewise, if you find that you have a theme that has gone really bad on you or you have a theme that you have tweaked and you've played with the code and all of a sudden it's not working, WordPress is not very forgiving when you're starting to play with code. It's either totally right or it's totally wrong. And if it goes bad on you and you can't get back to change the theme out to something else, your only recourse is to come in here to the cPanel and go into your folder uh, called WP Content and go into the um, 
either the theme or plugin area where there's a problem and delete it directly from there. And of course, once you get back to your actual WordPress, once it reloads, um, you may have to readjust it in terms of a theme. Certainly the plugin should be gone when you reload. And indeed I can see that my uh, plugin WordPress backup to, dr to Dropbox is gone. So that's how you can save yourself if you've got a bad plugin or a theme you just don't want. Talk to you in a minute.